Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a potential client and his second-hand controller that he purchased. Uh, and again, this is a large investment. Of course, everyone already realizes that. This particular system was, in it, was about $7,000. So why I'm doing this video is to give you guys an outlook on understanding what you're purchasing when you buy a second-hand system. Now, of course, I covered this with this potential client, but I feel that there is always something to learn, and hopefully many of you will understand after watching this what to watch out for and what to pay close attention to before you naturally lay out that kind of money. So first and foremost, we've got here the back of the system, or I should say the top, I guess, in this case, where, again, we've got our ports going out. Again, we do have the typical GX16 connectors, or um, it might, might even be bigger than that, maybe GX20s, because you can see we've got a differential in size here in comparison. So uh, you can see this connector is slightly smaller than these. Coming over, and many of you are familiar with this, we've got a Masso G3 installed, and we've got our four drives here, and of course it is running a slave axis on the Y. Now, what I want you guys to realize is, when you buy a system like this, and I have to say, this one, as far as cleanliness, does look as it should. I've removed all name tags as far as branding on here, other than what's naturally exposed. And the reason I did that, again, I want to keep this as ambiguous as possible. Uh, this system actually is built in a very clean fashion. And that's something that I don't get to say enough on this channel. This looks like a professionally built system. The only thing that I wouldn't be fond of, and I've discussed this with the potential client, is the VFD being installed near the drives. Uh, in the controller. A VFD, again, in best practice, should never be installed within your electronics enclosure because all of the EMI is trapped. Now, that being said, in all fairness, we do have an EMI filter right here. Um, again, radiated EMI, you're still really pushing the barrier, and I see no point to it if you were to mount this externally. That's, again, my own personal feeling. Does the system work? Well, this is where things get interesting. This potential client um, did not test the system. He bought it from someone that I guess he had uh, full trust in. Again, many of you realize that's a very risky proposition. I don't recommend that. But overall, looking at the system, I think we can all agree it's built, uh, assuming um, everything is connected properly, correctly. Um, the thing we have to keep in mind is that when you look at a system like this with all these individual components, if you, the end user, are not familiar with any of these components that are being installed in the system, that means you have to do research in the event something is not right. And what I mean by that is every lead, every relay, any type of power distribution block, the EMI filter, the VFD, all of the drives, the controller, when you have to factor in the amount of time, including the power supply, going through and troubleshooting a system like this, in the event you have a problem, if you don't have the direct literature or vendor support, you guys are in severe trouble. And when guys think, oh man, I'm saving a bunch of money, you need to ask yourself, what is your time worth and what did you actually pay for? Now, of course, covering with this potential client, the purchase he made, I naturally asked, did you get any of the support documentation? And he did not. So luckily, this system's in good working order, at least so far. And again, if you don't have that documentation, you essentially are buying potentially a brick. Because the thing to keep in mind, even with something as simple as a VFD, if it's a brand that you can't find all of the settings for, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to set that unit up without destroying something. And this is something that is always overlooked. And then as we go through the rest of the system, um, here's another picture. And again, just zooming in, you can see this is an x-axis motor cable. Um, it looks like we have ground leads coming out. And I'm assuming these are for ground drains. That's what we came up with. And it's funny, these are cleanly cut, which means they've never been terminated. It's kind of strange. And these are things, again, that it raised red flags to us, and it should raise a red flag to you. If you see cables that are custom built or built by another vendor, 
and they are not clean and symmetrical in the sense of the build that they are and you find external wires attached you need to question that person or that vendor and find out why that was done because this is not best practice in best practice a commercial grade cable would have all of the leads terminated with within the plug you're not going to see external leads just hanging out abruptly so again these are areas of of concern that you should be considering now of course anything can be fixed the question is just like your time and putting a, a value on it how much are you willing to pay to fix this and as we go down and we see some more interesting things and again these are just pointing out um, you know basic things to look at this particular spindle cable the uh, potential client contact me and discuss with me having a cable built for his spindle because the cable that was provided was what he felt was inferior, and I'm sure it's not double shield, and he confirmed he didn't know. Um, and again, it is using an HYH17 connector, so we all know, or should know, especially if you watch my channel at all, that an H17 connector, or any spindle connector for that matter, requires the proper double shielded cable to mitigate both forms of EMI in both high and low frequencies. This is mandatory because spindles and VFDs emit the largest amount of EMI, electromagnetic interference. So that's one other area we had to cover. Now mind you, this is still a $7,000 system and he still would have to invest in a new cable. Um, and, of course, going over these motor cables, that's something else he would have to decide on if he wants to use or change or whichever way he wants to um, integrate them. Now, coming through the rest of the system, he was nice enough to provide some pictures. And, again, the workmanship and how clean this is, aside from the fact that some of the connections are done with crimp terminals, everything here looks very clean, very professional, to be honest with you. Coming over to this picture with the drive <clears throat> or an extra drive that he was supplying, once again, um, this drive, in essence, is a servo drive. They call it a stepper servo driver, which we know already this is a Chinese manufacturer. Um, any closed-loop stepper, guys, just so everybody's on the same page, this term closed-loop stepper, it doesn't exist. It's a servo. Any motor that has an encoder on it is going to be a servo because the encoder produces feedback of positioning of where that motor is. <clears throat> so as long as we have that feedback positioning, that motor always knows what position it's in, and that's how it doesn't lose position like an open loop system, namely a stepper system. Now, once again, just to clarify, because I get guys that will say, you know, which is better? Better in terms of what? And that's what I always say. If you're looking at more accuracy, a stepper or a servo system have the same accuracy. It's the depths at which they achieve that accuracy is different. Now, if you say which can be self-correcting with accuracy in the event the motor is manually pushed out of position or um, pushed above its operating envelope, either one can be pushed above their operating envelope to actually make them lose steps. The question is, is which one is aware of it? <clears throat> and a stepper is not aware of it, whereas a servo is because of the encoder. So that's the best explanation on that. I feel that really just differentiates the two types. And then the question comes, you know, what your investment is going to be. In this particular instance, this end user has a very nice system. And again, it is using closed loop uh, drives. Coming over here again, we can come over here and see... We have more accessories coming out the back, and you can see how they did everything. They did wire tie everything. All of the lead connections appear to be labeled to some degree. I don't know exactly what this all breaks down to, but you can see here everything appears to be done nice and clean. Um, there is a serial number on here. He did send me some pictures, and again, if you guys ever are looking at a used system, and it has encoders on it, namely encoder cables, you already know you're dealing with a closed loop system. Okay, if you deal with a drive, once again, that says stepper, servo driver, or servo driver, you already know it's a closed loop system. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you will want to set up the configuration on those drives. They usually have internal programming, more like a BIOS on a computer, where you can set up individual features of that drive. Some people like them, some people don't. Just things to keep in mind. Um, so when guys think that they're getting, you know, oh man, this has got servos, it's such a better system, 
just keep in mind you do have those variables you're working with the drives usually cost more money and the setup is more intricate so again another case in point that you really want to think about is you see all these terminal connections on this drive you will have to research this part number if you did not get any literature and you decide to install this in your system you better know how to hook it up and you better have support from the company you're buying it from or once again you're at a standstill and I say that because guys look at systems like this and they'll see something like a Maso which they can identify and then they think the rest of the system is a joke to hook up let me tell you something guys until you've gone through all of this wiring and again we see the wiring guides here it's very clean until that stuff is removed and you've gone through all of the wiring gone through all of the leads that's when things get tedious one other area of, of this build I want you to pay close attention to is the potential client did explain to me that there is a ground terminal on this system. Again, you really can't see it in here. We do see two fans, which is a nice compliment because something um, typically missed on most systems, once again, defining it was done by um, someone that would be pro considered professional. Um, as we come through, though, here's the one of the final pictures, and you can see here we've got a single terminal on... I guess uh, I'm assuming this looks like a heat sink or a base plate and this would be for the ground now again in a in a, a system that's actually going to be complemented by multiple grounds as most will you would have a star point ground also known as a terminal bus bar there to implement numerous grounds because at this point you have a single ground there and that's not helping much with shield drains coming in from other cables and that puts me to another point to prove that that spindle cable is not double shielded because as we come in here you don't see a ground bus to where this is terminalized at the VFD none of these leads come over to earth ground where you would see a drain and you can see there's the E right there zoom in a little more it's kind of blurry but you get the picture and you can see there's no shield drain coming into that and there's also no shield drain coming in to the base chassis if they wanted to ground it to the chassis so what that tells you is this system is only having one ground and that's an area that would need to be looked at so again looking at this system is it well built to the naked eye yes it is it's very well built um, the issue is is are all the details met and are you willing to deal with any of the details that aren't at that price point so you have to ask yourself seven thousand dollars anything you have to invest more in that are you willing to do that if you're not it's like buying a home and saying well then you find out it's a beautiful house but you need a roof are you willing to invest to put the roof on to make it the house it's supposed to be structurally because again all of this in all the cleanliness that it is if it doesn't function guys and I mean one component that's something with CNC seldom discussed it only takes one of these components to not work and your whole system doesn't work and that's something that a lot of people don't realize it's there's nothing minor in this if the VFD doesn't work your spindle doesn't work if the power supply doesn't work the whole system doesn't work if the driver doesn't work an axis doesn't work I mean you can go down the line the fans one fan doesn't work your cooling system is down EMI filter doesn't work you're you're not mitigating enough EMI you'll have possible corruption there is an endless array of variables that will affect you the question is is where do you draw the line and that's just it so looking at something like this and understanding that what is considered minor to some may not be minor to others just to have a spindle cable built at least a couple hundred bucks at least at the very least a couple hundred bucks again depending upon who you buy them from for me it's at least a couple hundred on the H17 easily then you figure your motor cables like we discussed here if you needed new motor cables um, and ones that actually have grounds now again he is utilizing a cable that does require an encoder these are different in terms of their wiring and you can see that right here on the drive so again you have a plus a minus b plus b minus and then you have the ac so again these are different they're not the same as what you would normally deal with and again your inputs here you can see everything here is slightly different all of these need to be recognized when you're buying a used system because a used system may actually be costing you more money than starting fresh because remember this 
If you start to build your own system, you know what you put into it and what you've decided on and how you've designed it. When you have to redesign or re-engineer or pick up where someone else engineered the system, you better understand exactly what you're looking at because inside this box, you're going to notice that aside from these leads being labeled, what if you don't understand what the labeling is? So again, keep this all in mind of what you're investing. Keep it all in mind as far as your time constraint. Do you have a business you're working with in terms of you putting out products because if you do how much time is it going to take to you know recommission this system and get it set up and running if you don't know or it takes longer time it could put you behind it's happened to many of my clients I can't tell you how many this particular potential client has a patent he's working with for this machine so thinking about that you want to make sure that your time frame is open because if you have a constraint and you have a problem, you're in trouble. So hopefully this video has enlightened you to think. Just think before taking a leap into a used system without knowing the details. Number one question to ask is, do you have all of the literature for all of the components used to build this system? Typically what people will say, if they had it professionally, Bill's, I bought it from this company. And that sometimes draws ease to the buyer. And it shouldn't because if that company is out of business, you're SOL. And then the other thing is, even if the company is in business, and I've heard this many times, which is really sad, is that a lot of them won't support older model machines. Why? Because there's not enough money in it or it takes too much money on their end to invest in the engineers to you know, naturally take phone calls. A lot of companies don't want you to use older equipment because it forces you into the new stuff. We know that. And that new stuff costs a lot more money. So again, be aware. Now, of course, if you're mechanically inclined, you've got time, you don't mind doing the retrofit, you're going to look at it as a learning experience, then it's definitely an investment to consider. I don't recommend doing something like this if you're uncertain. Because I'm telling you now, I can't tell you how many people come in and say, you know, Vin, I've got this, I don't know what this is, or I don't know what that is. And then they're lost. And, you know, they're under this blind assumption that I'll just buy the equipment and off to the races I go, I'm ready to produce. People that have been involved in CNC and engineering realize that's never the case. Okay, you've got a lot of learning to do, even with all the hardware, no matter how simple it's made to look, nothing is that simple until you understand the variables you're working with. So keep in mind what I'm saying, and the best thing to do, and I've said this before, if you're looking at a used machine, I do offer consultations, and if you don't get one from me, get it from someone, because I'll tell you right now, it's the best $75 you'll ever spend to save you possibly thousands, or at least give you a heads up to say, hey, you know what, I know I need this, or this could be done better. You could even tell the, the seller, hey, correct this, and I'll buy it. No different than a home inspection. So when you think about it like that, people don't think at that level usually until after the fact. And I hope you found this channel prior to making your purchase. So at least then you're not thousands in confusion, so to speak. Because believe me, I've seen it and helped many people like that. And that's not what we want to do. We want to really get you guys educated to where you're understanding what genre you're getting involved with. And knowing exactly what you're purchasing. This way, when you start producing your products, you know where that bottom line is. Otherwise, you're dealing with a retrofit. You really never know until it's done and automated where you're at price-wise. So keep that in mind. Once again, guys, I thank you for your support. And hopefully, um, again, all your questions will be answered from this video. I realize that more and more videos always generate more questions. So again, leave any comments down below. And please like and subscribe. Thank you again. Take care.